think the, la the worst time to talk to a people is the, at the end of the day because all, all of us are already ex exhausted and wants to go home. So I'll try to be fast. I'll, I think I cannot complete my uh, presentation, so I'll, I'll, I'll go for half of it and maybe in, in another occasion or another uh, conference we can do the, the other. Can I have the pointer? The I don't have something to disclose. The stigma and discrimination represent an important challenge to achieve the ambitious goal of the United Nations of AIDS by ending the HIV epidemics by 2030. People living with HIV and AIDS around the world continue to face stigmatization and discrimination in various aspects of their lives. <clears throat> That's why tackling stigma is an integral to tackling the HIV. WHO looks at the stigma as a part of the process of devaluation of people living with HIV and AIDS, and stigma and discrimination are a clear violation of the human rights. Stigma refers to negative and unfavorable beliefs, feelings, attitude, and discredit directed toward the people living with HIV, the key population of HIV or their relatives. And the discrimination refers to prejudice, unfair, and unjust treatment in form of action or omission directed to the individual based on real or perceived HIV status. There is a close relation between the stigma and discrimination. Stigma is an attitude and the discrimination in the act toward this attitude. There is a cyclic relationship between the HIV and, and stigma. Those who are experiencing stigma and discrimination, they are more vulnerable to HIV and vice versa. Those people living with HIV are more vulnerable to, to experience stigma and discrimination. Stigma started early in the, in the epidemics of HIV, and this is a poll conducted in 1985 and published by Los Angeles Times. It showed that 50% of the adults surveyed supported quarantine of AIDS patients, 48% would approve identity cards for the HIV patients, and 15% favored tattoo AIDS victims. Not only that, but more, most of the employee, HIV employee with, uh, either have been fired from their work or have been transferred to another job because of the fear of their employer to get uh, transmitted uh, infection or virus. According to the United Nations Human Rights Council, discrimination against people living with HIV or thought to be infected is a clear violation of the human rights. And on, on the United Nations General Assembly that held on June 2011, they declared that for realization of all human rights and fundamental freedoms for all is an essential element in the global response to the HIV in form of prevention, treatment, care, and support. United Nations of AIDS emphasized that the eliminating HIV-related stigma and discrimination should be seen as integral and essential to every national AIDS program. This is the United Nations targets of 2011-15. They established three zero targets. Among them was the Z achieving zero discrimination by 2015, together with achieving zero new infection and zero HIV-related death. And there were 10 targets at that time. The number eight of them was eliminating the stigma and discrimination against people living with HIV. In 2012, the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief Program was launched to achieve AIDS-free generation. At that time, President Barack Obama said more awareness is needed so that no one with HIV and AIDS is stigmatized or discriminated against. Nelson Mandela, who was a strong fighter against the HIV after the death of his son, in 2002, during the United, uh, International AIDS Conference in Spain, he called or asked uh, a world leader to end the stigma of the HIV, and he said that many people suffering from AIDS and not killed by the disease itself are killed by the stigma surrounding everybody who has HIV and AIDS. In the report of UN AIDS 2015, it showed that 35% of the countries with available data, more than 50% of women and men, report discriminatory studies towards people living with HIV. And the HIV stigma index indicates that roughly one out of eight people living with HIV is being denied health services because of stigma. 
In that report, again, in 2015, there were 10 fast-track targets, among them was the elimination of HIV-related discrimination by 2020, where 90% of the people living with or at risk of and affected by HIV report no discrimination, especially in the health, education, and workplace setting. The report of 2017, May of European CDC, regarding the HIV and stigma, showed that two out of the three countries in the Europe stated that stigma and discrimination within the key population are a barrier to uptake of the HIV prevention and testing services. Over half of the reporting, 48 countries stated that among the health professionals, particularly within the key population, the stigma persists and form a barrier to uptake of HIV prevention, testing, and treatment, and half of the countries that reported the, the, the stigma and discrimination are strongly contributing to the late presentation. That's why they emphasize and, uh, a, a development and implementation of more effective approach, especially within the healthcare setting, regarding or to address or for, to, to tackle or combat the stigma and discrimination. This is a very famous slide, the stigma sickness slope. How does the stigma lead to the sickness? <clears throat> Those people who are living with HIV and the key population of that with HIV, whenever they are stigmatized, they will be more prone to the uh, various form of the violence, discrimination, harassment, and abuse. And they will be marginalized from different aspects, socially, economically, legally, and also poor healing, health service accesses and uptake, which in turn will lead to to, to buffer to, uh, to to guide them or make them adopting risky behaviors and poor social or emotional being, which will end up by the the feeling of sickness or even or plus or minus the death. There were various forms and classification in the literature regarding the stigma and, and the discrimination. This is may, maybe the most comprehensive one where we can classify the stigma to self-stigma or internalized stigma, governmental stigma, employment or organizational stigma, community and household level stigma, and healthcare stigma. I, I cannot go in details because of the time, but just the importance of knowing this classification to know when we, whenever we design the strategy or the program to tackle the stigma, where we can guide or target our, our actions. There are many poor outcomes and negative consequences, as we all know, of the stigma. And this is a control case control study that done on Ethiopia by her Dar Hospital to identify the determinants for late diagnosis among more than 500 patients of HIV. Among the key factors that were associated strongly with the delayed diagnosis, those who were experienced medium to high internalized stigma score, they were highly uh, at high risk to, 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 to present late or to, to have a late diagnosis for HIV. Similar results in Ethiopia, but it was a systemic review and meta-analysis of 10 studies, included 3,788 patients with AIDS. There were strong, again, correlation between those who perceived high stigma score with the risk of the late presentation versus those who experienced a low stigma score. Another cross-sectional cross study that estimate the association between HIV stigma and self-reported access to care and regular source of HIV, which was done in Los Angeles 2007, enrolled 202 patients. 77% of the participants reported that poor access to care item. 10.5% reported no regular source of HIV care. 42.5% reported suboptimal antiretroviral therapy adherence, and there was one third of participants showed or reported high level of stigma, and there was a significant association between the stigma and poor access to care. How about the condition or the situation of the stigma in our countries? I don't think it's different much from the other part of the world. This is the NAB National AIDS Program in 2008 report. It stated that stigma and discrimination are a major obstacle to HIV response in KSA. There were 10 commitments on that established on that report. Number four of them was eliminating gender inequalities and in all forms of violence and discrimination attitudes against women and girls, people living with HIV, and the key population by 2020. On, the, on January of that year, the Council of Ministers here in Saudi Arabia approved national acts on HIV and AIDS prevention and protection of the rights and responsibility of people living with HIV. This national act was approved just two months, or October 2019, by the Minister of, of, of Health. 
There were 29 items in the executive regulations on that national act. Among them, there were some items related to the stigma and discrimination. It was in Arabic version. That's why I, I translated to the English. So if there is any mistakes or defect in my English, please forgive me. Uh, the first one is increasing health awareness to reduce stigma and discrimination against people living with HIV. All medical personnel must provide appropriate medical care available to people living with HIV like any other medical care applicants. People living with HIV shall be guaranteed all their fundamental rights without distinction from other members of the society and shall not lose their rights such as right to the work, education, treatment, and not to be stigmatized and discriminated because of their infection. Any act or omission that constitutes neglect or discrimination against people living with HIV or harms their dignity is totally prohibited. All healthcare workers should not reject surgical interventions, anesthesia, endoscopy, dental treatment, or any other necessary procedures for people living with HIV, and ensure that any, anyone who refuses to do so, they will be accountable. This is the survey conducted on Jeddah in 2000, between 2013 to 15. It enrolled 3,841 participants to evaluate the, the education and the, the, the attitude of the population toward people living with HIV and HIV itself. 48% of the participants were male, 60% were single, and six, almost two-thirds of them were holding university certificates, and almost one quarter of them working in the medical field. There were nine questions in that survey regarding the, the, the knowledge with almost uh, a poor score of 5.2 uh, out of nine, and three questions regarding the attitude which also revealed the negative attitude toward people of, uh, living with HIV. 17.4% of the participants agreed that or accepted that they, their relatives will get married to HIV patients. 40% of them, they agreed or they think that the HIV patients should be isolated. The negative attitude, attitudes were more higher in, in those uh, older age groups, those with lower educational background, and those who do not have relatives or patients living with HIV. That's why better knowledge, the, as a conclusion, better knowledge and more positive attitudes are linked to higher educational background, which is emphasized the importance of uh, conducting an educational programs to omit or to try to tackle the, 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 the stigma among those population. Another cross-sectional study that done on the medical student at Al-Qasim University, a rule 204 male medical student to assist the same purpose, knowledge and attitude to HIV patients. 81% of the participants stated that they would not visit home of friends with HIV members. 73.1% indicated that they will not provide treatment for their relatives at home if they are got infected with, uh, with HIV. So again, there was an, an urgent need for the university and the educational institution to tackle this stigma among those group of uh, population. Another large cross-sectional study in, uh, done this time among the general dentists in the uh, Jeddah, I think uh, ruled 430 dentists. 98% of them they decided or reported that they will defer their patient to the last appointment in the day. 84% they said they were referred their patient to other, uh, other specialty, and 100% reported that they will wear double gloves, 94.7% they will wear uh, an eye goggle. And 67% of them, they reported or, or manifested some discriminatory attitude toward a patient living with HIV. The discrimination was higher among male fares as female, 71% fares as 59%. Those who are working in the private sectors were more experienced in the uh, discrimination rather than or more than the governmental worker, 81 fares as 68%. And only 15% of the dentists reported that they will feel confident to provide both surgical and non-surgical dental treatment. Another large study among the healthcare workers physician, nurses, lab technician, and dentists done in Abha region in the southern part of the Saudi Arabia, included 372 healthcare workers. As regards the attitudes, 56.2% of them feel uncomfortable eating meals prepared by HIV person. 10.5% they stated that HIV patients should be ashamed of themselves. 8.6% patients reported that 
those or HIV patients, they deserve what they got. And 7.5% reported that only premises people got the HIV infection. However, 79.3, which is a good number, among the participants show empathy to the HIV patients. So now most of these studies that have addressed the, the, the effect of the stigma worldwide, that were, they were talking about the effect of the stigma on the people living with HIV themselves or the, 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 the public health in general. But few of the studies that address the, or evaluate the effect of strategy against the discrimination. This is our, I think, latest uh, study that done by the, our MOH group, which was published in November 2019. It was a cost consequence analysis using a health economic model known, known as a Markov model to estimate the cost, effectiveness, and impact of the two HIV stigma intervention, preventing mother-to-child transmission, or self-testing of the HIV, which is from the control scenario, versus people, or for, versus doing nothing, or which is uh, form the, uh, the base case scenario over the 20 years in the, in the kingdom. There were three stigma inc incorporated to that module. And as you, you see here in the, in the figure, after 20 years of, 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 of surveillance, the, the strategy of uh, preventing mother-to-child transmission will lead to prevention of 12,900 new HIV infection, which is cor corresponding to almost 30 0.6% fewer than the, those who, who will not uh, adopt the, the nothing, do not uh, do nothing strategy. And HIV self-testing will result in reduction of 15,600 new HIV infections, which is corresponded to 36.9% low number of patients in comparison with the no doing nothing or enacted uh, strategy. In terms of the whole uh, healthcare <coughs> expenditure or the cost, they were <clears throat> Those who adopted the, the uh, BMTCT, it, it led to, to a reduction or saving of almost 151 million Saudi riyals. And those who adopted the HIV self-testing, it, it was results to 336.9 Saudi <clears throat> million riyals. So in conclusion, both strategies were found to be cost-effective in, in form or in terms of decreasing the transmission, decreasing new infection, and decreasing the cost that can be spent by the healthcare in, in our country. How can we do to tackle or, or the, reduce the stigma? As a bottom line, available evidence shows that tackling stigma effectively requires sustained efforts and support at every level from the individuals, frontline services, community organization, and up to the government. There are general principles that need to be taken into consideration, addressing the underlying drivers or causes of stigma, breaking the cycle of stigma, plan and design programs to reduce the HIV-related stigma and discrimination, and establishing a key indicator to measure the outcome of the program or the, 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 the strategy that you are going to adopt. As regard the causes in the literature and the study, there are three main major causes behind the, the stigma, HIV related stigma. Number one is lack of awareness and knowledge of the stigma and discrimination and its harmful consequences. Misconceptions around the HIV transmission due to insufficient knowledge, which lead to irrational fears of acquiring HIV through casual contact and social judgments and values linking the people living with HIV to improper or immoral behaviors. More or less the fourth cause is the structural default determinants and lack of laws and policies for discrimination. How to address those or these causes? We have to create awareness of stigma and benefits of reducing it among the population, fostering motivation for the change, addressing fears and misconception about HIV, discussing the taboo topics regarding the gender, violence, sexuality, and injection drug user. However, this, the, the, this target might be a bit not applicable in the conservative communities like or the in Islamic countries because it, it is driven by the, the um, cultural norms and the religious regulations behind that. And finding, finding skills to challenge stigma and change behavior. This is the break cycle. We all know that stigma and discrimination are mutually reinforced in the dynamic cycle. Here the marker of the people living with HIV, which will lead to stigma, discrimination with all the uh, 
the negative impact or the uh, disadvantage which make people at a greater susceptibility and vulnerability to get infection. So there are many entry points that we can go through and tackle the stigma and attempt to reduce it. For example, by increasing awareness among the, the, the people, we may mitigate or reduce the effect of the marker by increasing awareness and education, learning activities and educational programs. We may able to, 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 to reduce or even prevent the stigma, and hence, by certain measures, we can also decrease the discrimination with its all disadvantage. And finally, by adopting or encouraging people to adopt preventive measures, we may able to halt or even stop the, the progressing of, the, of this uh, dynamic cycle. The key components for planning any, pla any, any the program or strategy to tackle the stigma depends on the following steps. Identify the extent to which the HIV-related stigma and discrimination block the surface beyond or within the healthcare setting. Identify the most affected people by the stigma and discrimination and plan programs that address their needs. Establishing a costing and budgeting for the programs, implementing and ensure full access and uptake of the evidence-based program, and finally monitoring the, the program to, to find out what is the, 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 the outcome and what is the most available or the best modality or strategy that can be taken to, 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 to address and to reduce the stigma. In the literature, there are many indicators can be used to, to, to evaluate the outcome of, the, of the, any strategy against the stigma. Maybe the most commonly and widely used is the, what is called the People Living with HIV Stigma Index. It had been adopted by many countries worldwide. However, I, I don't think the, the, the measuring the stigma is an easy task. It, it's, it sometimes or many, uh, in, on many occasions, it is really a complex and very difficult task to be achieved. What are the key anti-stigma actions that we need to take? The stigma theorists these days advocate the combined multi-sectoral approach to address the HIV stigma. We have to work on multiple levels. For example, the structural level by, by training the law officials to promote access and justice. At the individual level, by counseling and psychosocial support around the stigma and discrimination, skills building approach, empowering people living with HIV and other vulnerable groups. At the institutional level, we may work on establishment of the workplace policies and laws against stigma, implementing a faith-based strategy to reduce stigma and discrimination, strengthen the behavioral changes, engage a range of ministries, including health, justice, interior, defense, and education. And it, I think this is the most important step among these actions. At the community level, we have to advocate the participatory education programs inclusion or participation of the people living with HIV for designing, planning, policy making of any program, engaging media and mass communication, which is really lacking in our countries, and enlisting or engaging public figures, including religious leaders and celebrities to advocate against the stigma and discrimination. And again, this is a lacking thing, unfortunately, in our country. This is the environment, how to, to figure out or how to design or frame a, a strategy against the stigma and discrimination. There are three components, where, what, and how. Where and with whom are we trying to have the effect? Are we going to tackle the society, the community, organizations, social networks, etc.? What are we trying to affect to achieve the change? Are we going to, to target or to, to, to reduce the stereotypes of the people, knowledge of the HIV, knowledge of the stigma, discrimination, and gender norms? And based on the best available data, how are, are, we, are we going to achieve the goal? What is the best modality or strategy that we can be used? Regardless of the questions or the answer to the question, regardless of the strategy that we need to take, the key success factor for this is to make sure that we are adopting a comprehensive approach that at the end will achieve the desired goal. How about the stigma discrimination and the uh, Healthcare setting, it's, it's really an underestimating aspect of the stigma, and we need to, to address it and tackle it so strongly and aggressively. This is the report of the United Nations AIDS in 2017. 
they shows that people living with HIV who experience HIV related stigma are more than twice as likely to do, to delay enrollment into the, into care across 19 countries with available data one out of five people living with HIV avoided going to the clinic or hospital because they fear the stigma or discrimination one out of four people have experienced discrimination in the healthcare setting one out of three women living with HIV have experienced at least one discriminatory attitude and that's why in the 2016, the agenda of the United Nations and the WHO aimed for zero discrimination in the healthcare. To address the stigma and discrimination in the healthcare setting, there are three levels. Again, as the same for non-health care setting situation, we need to address the, the, the stigma at, at multiple levels, including the individual, environmental, and policy levels. At the individual level, we have to increase awareness among the healthcare workers, address their fears and misconceptions about HIV transmission, address issues of association of HIV with immoral and improper behaviors, and training them on non-discrimination and medical ethics to make sure their, their attitudes or to not negatively affect their, their health provider or care provider to the, to the patient, and to make sure that they will treat both HIV and non-HIV patients equally. At the environmental level, we have to create a safe working environment for healthcare workers by uh, providing information, supplies, and equipment that are necessary to prevent incubation uh, and transmission of the HIV. For example, the gloves, the sharp containers, disinfectants, and more important, the PEP, providing of the PEP. At the policy level, we have to make sure that the policy need to be enacted to protect safety and health of both the patients and the healthcare workers. And more importantly, we have to include all the staff, including the nurses, doctors, guards, cleaners, and etc. So all people in the healthcare workers should be included in this program. How about the role of the stigma? Uh, sorry, the role of media to tackle the stigma. It is seen by the United Nations as a critically enables in HIV reduction. It will help in reducing social and psychological impact of the HIV. Some recommendations that we can take in consideration to engage the media in the program or any strategy to address the uh, stigma are all media projects to reduce HIV and stigma should be evidence-based, well-researched, and targeted. Media should focus on the key population at higher risk of HIV. Governments should allocate more resources to media and campaigns, and media organizations need to coordinate efforts to scalp up their output. Provide training and resources for the media personnel. Prioritize the drama because it has an emotional effect that might help to decrease the attitude of the population and improve quality of the facts while content on the TV and radio. And finally, you have to adopt, adopt a long-term strategic approach rather than a short one. These are the, the examples of how, how, how effective is the, the, the media if we are engaged in the, uh, in the uh, and the program or strategy to, to tackle the stigma. This is the largest HIV AIDS education campaign done in the UK. Don't Die of Ignorance, which was launched in 1986. It was very influential in informing public perception of HIV in the UK and it increased awareness of HIV and AIDS among general populations. Lady Diana in 1987, when she opened the Middlesex Hospital in London to treat the HIV and AIDS patient, the photographist of BBC News at that time said she did something that history would remember forever. She shook the hand of the AIDS patient without wearing gloves. That's to challenge the misconception or misbelief at that time that the casual contact with the patient of HIV might transmit the disease. And finally, her, the, uh, her son, Prince Harry did the same when he met Gareth Thomas, the rugby player in London, and the, during the HIV testing week in London on last month, November 2018. Thomas said that Prince Harry's HIV test and broke, had broken down the stigma, and that will help to so many people. Finally, to summarize what, what are the steps that need to be taken by, at the higher level, all governments should develop evidence-based strategy for reducing HIV stigma. Funders should invest in developing evidence base for effective strategy against stigma. Social marketing and media channels need to be included. And any program should include a people living with HIV. Governments and Human Rights Commission should increase awareness of Equality Act. They have to impact the laws and policies on people at risk for HIV. 
government with the community organization should work to implement and evaluate a pilot for HIV stigma, and they have to, they have to maintain HIV support services to enable people living with HIV to cope with the stigma. Thank you, Andrea. I'm, I'm so sorry for taking time of you.